Check it out, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Soul Food Sunday. And guess what I'm dropping? I'm dropping a Creole gumbo. Super simple. Let's get it. All right, so look, you guys already see, look, I've already uh, prepped my, you know, my veggies. I've gotten my chicken together. All I need to do right now is just like put a little salt and pepper. I'm gonna be using my Dutch oven, right? So in my Dutch oven, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding a little heat. I want you guys to pay attention because I'm gonna start off with using a little bit of the olive oil to do my browning of my chicken, right? Two pepper meals. Obviously, look, I put that white pepper in this one right here, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and go with my, check it out. Go with just a traditional black pepper. You just wanna put some of this on here. Now, I'll just go ahead and give it a little, you know, dusting of this kosher salt. I can hear it, my oil is ready. I can look at it and I can see. Check it out, when you look down in there, you can see the little shimmery, little, I guess that's like some little ripples, that's what I call it. Now, let me go ahead and get my tongs. I'm gonna take them, and remember, we brown them. Okay, folks, now I want you guys to come on in here and take a look at this. If you look down in here and you see this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this over with. That's what we want. That's why I use the thigh. But being honest with you guys, you can use uh, chicken breast. A lot of people use chicken breast, especially in a chicken gumbo. You know what I mean? But me, I like to go ahead and use that, uh, you know, this dark meat. I love the way that dark meat tastes. You know what I mean? And it's super juicy. You know what I mean? We don't want to overcook it. All we want to do is brown it. Now I'm just making some adjustments here. When I brown on this side, on the other side, I'm gonna take them out and then we're gonna go ahead and start that root, folks. Okay, folks, now that we brown, keep the juices in the inside. Okay, folks, one more time, I want you to come in here and take a look at this. You know what I mean? By us using that, you know, we got the chicken, we had our oil, right? We had our salt, pepper. It kind of like forms this, you know, crust. That down there, that's all of the flavor, folks. That's what you wanna have, and for those of you guys who don't know, that's the fine, F-O-N-D. Now, remember we got andouille sausage. You saw me go ahead and cut those down. We're just gonna go ahead and add those right now and just put a little heat on them. Right? We're just gonna take these out. Okay, folks, so look, I put my fire, cause we starting that root, right? So I put my fire underneath the bottom. I'm at a medium, a good solid medium, you know, flame underneath, right? So if you guys pay attention and you look down here in my pot, you'll see a lot of bits and a lot of fine. That's what we want to have. Now, if you ever made gumbo or had somebody made gumbo and they said they burned the roux, usually when you burn the roux, you'll see these little black specks or whatever. But don't forget, we got fine here. We're going to get that up. So I don't want you guys to think that I've done it. And I see just a little bit of heat. So I'm going to come with my flour right now and we're going to make that magic. It's roux time. Right, so I'm just gonna move this around, absorb what I can down there, right? Cause we wanna cook some of this flour out of here anyway. What I'm getting ready to do is just add my oil, right? Okay, so what we're doing is, which I probably should have mentioned in the very beginning is, we're trying to achieve that dark chocolatey color to it. You know, it's something on the dark side, you know what I mean? Uh, this part right here, this is why you'll see me just standing here and you just wanna keep moving this back and forth. You know what I mean? Because we don't want to let it set and burn, right? So, if you look at it, it go in stages. It starts off a little bit of tan, then it becomes like more of a peanut butter color, and then we start moving towards the chocolate color. You can do it like dark chocolate, but I tell you, when you start getting dark like that, it gets a little tricky, because you don't want to burn it. You don't want it to turn black like coffee. All right, so look, after you see, you see that color right there, that's what I'm talking about, right, folks? Now, I don't want to make it no darker right now, you know what I mean? Because we still got to continue to cook it, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come with my onions and just drop these in here just like you see. Now the onions are gonna pick up the rest of the fine and the rest of the veggies are gonna do the same. Remember, it's the acid that's inside of there and it's gonna pick up and get a little thick on you. You know what I mean? So we get this going. Now we come with our celery, right? Remember the water's in that and then we have that flour all of that just becomes a little bit on the thick side. You know, it just starts thickening it up and becoming more like a, a roux that we're familiar with. You know what, I almost forgot to put my, uh, to dice down my bell peppers, but as you see, I got them. Everything else had just a little bit of a head start. Now we'll just go ahead and add those also and let this cook down. So after I get this mixed in here good, I'm getting ready to go ahead and put my garlic cloves in. We don't have to worry about burning them because we got a bed to put them on top of, you know? Now, I want you to come in here, remember, because we talked about the continuing to cook and the color of the roux, right? So, let's look at it again. Remember we said we wanted to be dark chocolate? Now look at it. 
And that's what's so cool about having it on video is that the fact that you get to see it in all the different stages. It's hard for me to go ahead and say exactly when you want to go ahead and do it. So better yet, I do it. You match your color to what I'm doing. As long as you got a medium flame, we good. Okay, now once we got this, you know, mixed up, you know, everything is combined and married together, right? But it's still on the thick side. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my tomatoes, right? Now I'm going to take my seasoning. I'm going to come over the top with it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. And what I'm gonna do is, check this out. I'm only gonna put about a tablespoon in here for the whole thing. Anybody need any more, they can put it inside their own individual, you know, individual uh, bowl, right? Now you wanna go ahead and just add, you know, your stock. And then everything starts to lo loosen up. You already got the color you was looking for, right? Now what we wanna do is get this back up to a boil, right? Now I have frozen okra. That's what this is right here. Frozen okra works just fine, you know. Uh, if you got fresh, that'll work. But if it's frozen and that's all you can get, it really depends on where you, leave, where you live and the time of year it is, right? So I just want to get this up to, back to a boil and I'm gonna show you what we do. Cause once I get it back to a boil, we're gonna add these bay leaves. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce my andouille, right? Oh my goodness. Now on this chicken, it's really up to you how you do it. You know what I mean? And for me, I would just put it in here like it is. You know what I mean? And I shred it later, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it, just tear some up and then put it in here, right? But this right here is gonna level up the, the broth right here also. You guys gotta remember, listen, we just adding a bunch of layers. Bay leaves, get them in there and get them going. All right, now I'm getting ready to set everything down to a simmer, right? Once I have it on a simmer, we got our bay leaf in. We got everything in here. We tasted it and it's, it's great. Listen, now don't forget, we got frozen okra, right? I'm actually getting ready to put this back in my freezer and I'm gonna wait. We wanna put this in the last 30 minutes. Now I'm gonna cook this for about on low, so, so it'll simmer, right? For about an hour and a half. Next time you guys see me, you know what I mean? I'll probably put this in at an hour and we'll go that last half hour with the okra in there. Now. I didn't say this, but you, obviously you can see I'm using a Dutch oven. What we want to do is we want to put that top on there. Just like you see, make sure it's on super low and I'll see you in one hour. Okay, folks, one hour. Actually, it's been about an hour and 15 minutes, right? Now, we got that frozen okra, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this open like that, right? I'm gonna go ahead and add this. I'm gonna add the whole thing in the inside, right? Now you can see it stopped boiling right off the top because it kind of like cooled it, but I'm gonna let it come back up. Check it out, folks. I gotta get in right now and let y'all know. You can see by this smile on my face, I'm excited. Listen, the Grilling TV Network is back in action. Listen, you guys gotta go by there. I'm gonna say it one more time and it's probably gonna be on the screen. The Grilling TV Network. You guys come by there and you guys get the chance to see some great chefs from all over the United States, right? Listen, you'll see people like BJ from Alcinius. Listen, they call her the Queen of Tennessee. Look, we got Big Daddy Aaron McCargo, Chef Kenneth Temple, Chef Laureus, and then myself and we got Pat Neely. So go by, check it out. Don't forget to like some of those videos better yet subscribe so you can be notified anytime we drop some i'm not finna over talk it over here on this one and guess what folks you know how i leave i'm out peace okay folks now i'm finna go in here Ooh, you know what i mean nothing like having that andouille you see that right there that's a whole lot of goodness right i'm gonna go ahead and drain it just a little bit just so i don't get nothing all over my my plate style bowl right so i'll take this and i'll just start adding this and bringing this around like that. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so you just, you can see like how I do my rice, right? Even looking at it in the center right here, listen, you just put it, super simple, spray it with some nonstick spray. You know, you form your mold, set it inside, drop it down, right? That way when you get yourself a ladle or whatever spoon you type, you know, you're using, you can just go ahead and put it around and that's how you get that presentation. You know, uh, you gotta get yourself, I don't know, I call these my little bowl plates because it got this little rim on here right here. But listen, I'm not finna over talk it. I'm finna get in and do what I do best. Oh, some chicken, okra. I'll come back for the andouille. Cheers, y'all. Hey folks, I'm gonna keep it real with you. Look, got you eating, not really doing a whole lot of talking and look, had this in there. And then somebody reminded me like, hey, where's your bowl at? Hey, this is where my bowl is. Hey, so with that being said, talk to me down in the comment section below. 
what would you do to level this up? But I pretty much got you into the game. I'm going to quit talking like that. I know I got you into the game. Make it, come back, talk to me, and uh, we'll have that discussion. Now, if you're new to my channel, you know what to do. Subscribe, like, do all of that. Check it out. I'm going to get myself one more bowl, and I'm out, folks. Peace.